But recently, uh, since 2018 or 2020, because of carbon credits and uh, huge value for Bayachar, so okay. there is nobody to guide them, no university, no college. So right. I have taken myself as a mission to reach uh, at least 1 million people in two years. Wow. And uh, 1 lakh people uh, okay. within this year, I thought already I reached uh, in a way, so indirectly. So with this mission I am working because uh, this is one of the promising solutions we have as of now related to carbon sequestration as well as address the present challenges related to agriculture, food security, your environment and uh, many areas uh, if we add uh, including biochar for say green coal what they are calling nowadays. So if you are using as fuel in industries as a renewable energy source, that is another domain. Uh, but uh, there are umpteen um, areas and opportunities uh, and create a million jobs within no time uh, in the biochar related sectors with uh, value additions. So okay. whatever existing sectors are there, they can also uh, join in this biochar uh, movement. Like say, the Colgate has started the the charcoal toothpaste, let us say. For them it is a business as usual, but they have added biochar in it. So like that additional things will also get added in the whole market. Yeah, that is the potential I see as of now. I would suggest uh, to have our own methodology because uh, that is my, this thing you go by Puro or Vera or CSI or anybody, that's fine because they have developed some standards and uh, they are in, in the business and uh, they are supporting. Uh, that is very positive of them. But actually I feel uh, whenever uh, we have services from the developed country towards developing countries, the cost of deliver of service will be very high. So when people adopt on a large scale, I think viabilities will be very difficult even now when they say this much percentage I should get agencies across from developed countries they will be definitely costly because they cannot sustain so that way I think we should have our own methodologies and standards and DMRVs and everything in place I think that is what my say personally and uh, I will be happy to work with anybody who want to develop these things because I was one of the first person to write books or uh, to create awareness on this whole by a child. So it is doable, that's not a big thing and already we have standards and we need to adopt to for our own communities. Uh, our own means not just India and speaking, all the other developing countries or other underdeveloped or poor countries also we can look into and uh, that I think we can play a major role that's a broader uh, dream I have nothing by HR is by HR only adoptability is the issue see when we want to work with poor communities we I tell uh, my method of trainings are it starts with one rupee to produce by HR I say that is matchbox Okay. okay. So with that also we can help communities generate carbon credits. And okay. we have technologies which are worth some lakhs of rupees uh, where everything is controlled. There also we can generate carbon credits. So it's your uh, choice actually uh, where you want to operate and with whom you are operating, what is the biomass. And uh, there are so many other things uh, in it. Yeah, there is no one... Uh, uh, method uh, as of now, I would say I will stick on only to this with method because we are just beginning and let us give flexibility and uh, make everybody a partner in it rather than make it exclusive with uh, say unless you do like this you are not doing. So those things will uh, put some people away. So that way we are not going to help anybody in this movement. I say... Uh, like green revolution this is the black revolution that we are into and uh, this revolution uh, need not take so many years 
and uh, we need to start immediately so that it helps everybody yeah. for that reason i give flexibility to everybody let us improve every day that's what i say so, but let us start i don't keep anything personally but i train uh, people who are into it who got enrolled with somebody and uh, i need to train them to start because uh, there is one mention if you see any standard na? they should be trained by a professional yeah. yeah that is the, that is a must in all the methodologies so that aspect i take care so i do intensive three day training after that they go on uh, doing uh, that by hr and then they get credits so that's what happened but uh, i am not into business actually i am into that by hr education broader thing and mentorship so my role uh, i have distinguished myself so that's what i do as of now that's my domain i think uh, you know well about my work in the cook stoves i had been uh, again a great designer i should not say myself you can google it to chat gpt it will tell so i designed 50 cook stoves both gas fair as well as other improved cook stoves so, and i was uh, deeply involved for a decade or so in this thing wow and okay. facilitated in parts of eight states mm-hmm. and uh, uh, but uh, my work was not as a business model or anything but uh, as a designer or a person who want to support the rural communities like that so so since 2005 i was there in this area also yeah biomass cook stove i give flexibility right some you can uh, burn anything like from fuel wood or uh, even sawdust uh, like make three g stove which gives flexibility to burn anything up to you can use it as charcoal stove or you can use sticks or you can use uh, dust or you can put a fan and make it gas fire everything you can do with one stove so that uh, particular design i have done and facilitated 10000 pieces uh, as a single person you can imagine single means uh, beyond the project also i was working and facilitating no i don't have any manufacturing unit per se but i use artisans basically for so that uh, i use reuse material so that my cost is so low you'll be very surprised how it is possible it is like uh, from 100 rupees to 150 rupees only my stock make three <laughs> so that oh, way okay. uh, because there is no cost involved or um, profit involved in this anybody with good will who came to support me like uh, my travel and my honorarium and other thing there i worked so that way i never made any profit or i never encouraged anybody to link profits with cook stoves you know very well i think you are into it Absolutely. it is very difficult unless somebody supports uh, this things yeah so that was my value system and uh, have done this uh, written a book called so several books but understanding stoves is one book uh, published by meta meta in netherlands so it's a very popular book on stoves initially it was voluntary carbon credits for some time i got a project support from france uh, paris very basically so after that also i was facilitating uh, so without any this thing yeah so it was like this. so they were supporting my component of travel or creating awareness and uh, my honorarium and all that but i was giving uh, stalls set uh, almost all no cost, uh, no profit margin anything like cost to cost i was facilitating so that uh, beyond the project uh, the local community who are empowered to produce will produce and then the community will adopt so that was my strategy with project or without project community should be able to adopt the other stoves you know very well they even in those days they were like 1500 or above they were selling about a decade back also so even now i don't know what is the cost of this uh, stoves but uh, for any community without any additionality or bringing in some kind of subsidy or other thing they are no more sustainable i know so that was the thing uh, i was part of all the um, groups also i trained in bangladesh on stoves and also i visited uganda 
then in Kenya again I trained the communities there on stoves. So within parts of eight states in India I trained uh, people. So uh, there, there I used all kinds of materials uh, in my designs, even institutional cook stoves for schools, hostels. I uh, designed with uh, refractory bricks too, ordinary bricks too, uh, the metal uh, related ones and uh, all kinds of designs. I have a stoves museum actually, my own museum of all these designs put together. So that is uh, close to Hyderabad, around 110 kilometers north uh, east. Yeah. Even the CNN has covered uh, some of my things in Bayrachar and uh, CNN, IBN also covered a documentary on this. Yeah, <laughs> this was a recent uh, article. Yeah, you will find many actually. So it was like a movement again for me. Uh, Bayrachar is another uh, movement. Uh, Cookstores is rural energy is another movement. And everything related to climate change, the broader area. Because yeah. within that domain I was working and these were the tools for me to do that mitigation and adaptation and all that. So even if you Google just my name and stuff, then you'll get a lot more. My blogs are very, very popular. Blockchain technology or whatever you mention now. So this kind of traceability or integrity, what I say, ultimately, Say if it is related to afforestation, reforestation or some kind of uh, uh, even cook stoves, there are some uh, limitations. But whereas uh, when we come to biochar, yeah. the retiring is one aspect you might put into uh, in the trade mechanism. But that itself is not the end. I want to put up some challenges before you. Say after 30 years or 40 years, some farmer has put up a case telling that uh, somebody in his neighborhood has applied biochar so much, uh, it moved into his field and he is unable to apply biochar to get the credits. So that uh, farmer X who applied biochar and already got benefited, let us say, how do you compensate the farmer where by location it has shifted from point A to point B? I am putting some typical cases, it might not have come into the court but definitely they will come one day. And second thing is somebody bought and has given a location but he has only applied like a mulch and recollected it and put up the or he might have sold for barbecue. So how do you address that? Because burning has a different value and uh, using in soil has different value or if you use it as a filtering media it has a different value. So values are different. So, but uh, for us, uh, most of our applications are ending by location. I think, uh, how do we work beyond, say, your company, say, can it exist for 100 years? This is a very big question. If all the database is there, where do we put this database in a common source so that it remains for ever? So, these are very, very fundamental where I am looking at. So, I want... Uh, people to work beyond not just uh, uh, this uh, trading till trading uh, mechanism is one thing that's fine so if we bring such kind of things then definitely we will have um, more uh, integrity and uh, adaptability and uh, uh, interrelated things also we have to bring up see all your projects are interrelated for me also, why I am into okay. cook stoves and biochar is both are interrelated because people started questioning me, how can you uh, facilitate, originally I was into biogas stoves, so, uh, but uh, I thought biogas will address only few people in a village who are well off, but we cannot reach every person in a village, especially poorest of the poor. Then okay. I have shifted to biomass cook stoves, so that is how where from cook stoves, the what I got is biochar, that biochar applied into the field, I encouraged our communities to adopt. So that we will get more biomass, so that biomass itself becomes renewable and addresses many other issues. So like that, uh, this uh, inter approach even for me to develop the pyrolysis units, I have designed at least seven of them. Uh, different uh, uh, basic uh, pyrolysis units. Uh, even that aspect was also inbuilt. So everything is interrelated. No, let us say when you say plantations or cook stoves or biochar, all are interrelated in a way in a loop. 
and all are related to the common thing of climate change let us say yeah so that way i think uh, uh, we can address many things together so i think other uh, integrated things like i was involved in forest department fsc certification uh, what certification for forest stewardship council certification fsc so okay. that's also on sustainability they map and uh, they give uh, premium on the price of their uh, when they uh, the pulp wood when they sell they get a premium price so that also has indirectly all these uh, factors to be measured so i was consultant to the forest department here regarding this and i am supporting out. both uh, low tech and mid tech kind of companies in between also as of now so other big uh, uh, pyrolysis units are there but viability is are not there as business model that is a big issue but i feel uh, around uh, 20 25 lakhs uh, worth 2 uh, 3 units are better as of now even if you get into business otherwise uh, i said no that uh, other uh, like uh, we have pit method trench method county key like the different other methods are there which are also part of carbon credits they are viable as of now industry to establish pyrolysis units so okay. i go with them uh, like uh, assessing their biomass uh, their geographical area of distances and uh, uh, what kind of uh, end product would come at the end so all these assessments i do then i try to look at what are the different uh, pyrolysis units uh, they are existing and i try to fit in what fits into them so that uh, for uh, that person it is viable and uh, doable and uh, the payback period is uh, low so this kind of analysis i do for people yeah apart from that uh, artisan method i trained uh, you name any parts of weight states i have trained intensive trainings right from uttarakhand up uh, gujarat indirectly the people i trained they worked there for some time but uh, rajasthan maharashtra then uh, karnataka ap telangana like that uh, different places are chatisgarh also madhya pradesh i have contacts they are doing but they attended my training something like the people they are doing it So I not the con, but uh, I know geographically that is a good area as of now. Madhya Pradesh viability is are very good because uh, see success depends on where you are locating. So that also I facilitate a lot by looking at uh, the communities uh, there. Even that remoteness also helps sometimes. If they have other uh, sources of income apart from agriculture, then they get deviated. and uh, you will not get people and it is very costly to do anything so that way i think madhya pradesh was a good bet uh, for me or uh, yeah like that i could uh, make a sense of the areas uh, when i do assessments with uh, people because i communicate with hundreds of people uh, regularly during my trainings or uh, otherwise they call me for their different reasons uh, so when there is exchange of talk and other things then i get a sense so that way i know i got madhya pradesh but physically traveling to uh, all these eight states i had been there in the last uh, uh, seven months so and working with uh, uh, international agencies to local communities and organizations uh, it, it's a cross section of uh, including universities uh, academia so many people called me even individuals also called me now i have very good clients from real estate and imagine they are doing far better because they want to sell their plots with plants so if their plants grow faster and better then they can show their clients that uh, this is how the growth is and uh, like sandalwood plantations is a very popular thing so they are happy to invest in biochar and adopt biochar within no time or some people are buying lands which are not fit for anything for this real estate so they have money because they got into real estate to even uh, do this mitigation or amendments to the soils and all that so there i am mentoring even alkaline soil form
so these are the different uh, options we have so uh, even from north east from tea coffee also already i visited the north east once long back so again these are other areas which are coming or high end crops or even polyoses and other uh, new high end technology people are there even precision agriculture or ai in agriculture if you say big data yeah. in agriculture so that's a very big thing so those who are really interested up to hydroponics also we can get into by hr as a media everywhere we can get into so these are the various options i see and the future i see as of now i am getting different kinds of people uh, to work with i am basically an innovator and a thinker and a kind of uh, person with lots of grassroots uh, communication and understanding in my life so maybe that is helping me to outreach so many people uh, are spreading this my channel has all the videos you can go through i cannot show because whatever i am doing is not a small thing even when i train it is three day training even the ceos of the companies attend that intensive training i provide i say this phone call or chai pe charcha nahi chalta if you want to really get immersed in this whole thing get here so that's how i do because uh, here uh, we see so many opportunities and uh, the understanding that we want to develop together yeah. uh, or add on the value to what uh, a person is thinking or a company is thinking so i work with uh, different models like i provide retainership basis also so that uh, they take me for 6 months one year or some people put me on their board also that is specific to their uh, requirements and uh, we cannot uh, copy one strategy to another area because uh, we know the challenges are completely different and uh, we have to work uh, for that area even application is a very big factor and nobody knows whatever a person who is into business is selling the product rather than really supporting a farmer in uh, getting the result that is optimum so i have shown five times uh, the produce also in my results so yeah that is one way second yes, thing is i work on uh, this uh, per day basis also i work so when somebody wants uh, if they are calling me somewhere they take care of everything and they provide for that day my honorarium yeah so these are the two models i am working as of now so that uh, i could outreach and support many people because i get a farmer also communicating with me or some international organizations there is a mosaic of people or sometimes media will communicate with me i am the president of progressive biochar society in hyderabad we formed a society and we had been conducting several national level seminars as of now and we are conducting an international seminar in january and by hr in hyderabad and we are also helping everybody establish their societies actually i am also one of the founder member of the society of by hr initiatives uh, way back in 2009 only we formed this society and uh, of course uh, as we could not continue that tempo so uh, yeah. then again now recently here hyderabad based we formed one organization so many people are enthusiasts are there in hyderabad and they are very uh, positive as of now so we want a similar movements happening everywhere so investment in awareness and uh, all these things is also a very big thing and people who really want to scale up should also invest in this aspect i feel so so i started this bhayachar education channel uh, myself a youtube channel and it is growing very fast and uh, more than 1 lakh views i got from more than 20 countries as of now and uh, very happy with the uh, kind of response it is having because there is no knowledge in universities institutions very limited phds uh, they do very specific to areas but not holistically so this also a ga- gap is there and policy also we need to work a lot as of now and there is lots of support for biofuels and uh, many other things but uh, related to bhayachar uh, we need to work with the government as of now so this is also one uh, domain that we have task no three days i conduct based on demand actually uh, uh-huh. that is intensive training uh, course uh, so where i teach uh, right from fundamentals with some hands on experience for the people 
to learn exactly how to do pyrolysis uh, then and there okay even a pressure cooker is enough for me to explain the best technology that is existing today okay, okay. i can convert your pressure cooker into a retort and show you exactly wood vinegar pyrogas everything with that pressure cooker i can show you. or even if you want to test biochar the qualities i can use the simplest methods to show you that uh, this is good quality see you can do this test so like that i have devised many simple things so that uh, understanding is important rather than uh, two scientific calls will not help anybody yeah the common understanding first we have to generate right from our past also we have to bring in our knowledge understanding of biochar then add on the value of the today's uh, what we are doing otherwise what is that they are cultivating and with biochar what result they got so you can always compare with neighborhood farms and see with biochar without biochar so that workshop i am conducting so that i want people to believe and then work not just uh, uh, believe our teachings or preachings but uh, from examples uh, we want them to be there yeah so that's why i am doing all this Whoever is working on non-disclosure agreement uh, between the person who got into the signing uh, agreement and the person who is uh, in between facilitating, okay. okay, that is there actually. So that final statistics uh, I don't want to get into or involve because when I communicate as a person as a teacher, any wrong value many people would suffer in between. Yeah. Yes. so that's why i don't get into that the details are don't share them also even if i know so uh, that i keep to myself uh, that's why i do and even technology wise i never uh, compare this and that i say that is fine if you want to but as a personally if you are consulting me then i'll work with you work with you means exactly let us put on table uh, what are the logistics what are your concerns uh, let us find out that's how i work with individually but otherwise i don't uh, comment on any other thing existing because we know every technology has plus and minus and the effort that has been put behind that also the yes. people may not be able to give a technology so cheap because uh, there is lots of efforts went to into it uh, designing it or many things i am a open knowledge guy so i don't have any right to get into their business models yeah so i i feel okay i will suggest what you want but uh, as a mentor i will be working with you so that is my model cotton stock uh, that is one big thing already happening uh, um, thousands of tons also it is happening i have trained uh, several places but per se if you say any this straw wheat paddy and all that uh, i know some people are working but i am not sure about their uh, real business models of success i am not sure so the challenge is still there i know anything that is low dense and uh, fluffy we require lots of credits to uh, do that kind of business i mean to say high value of support otherwise uh, the model that i am working now currently even without carbon credits your business is successful there i want to start with anybody so that at least they start uh, even without credit system they start but at the end if they get credit that's a bonus for them so this kind of business models i am suggesting when i am working with uh, individually with some people who are really investing if they don't invest anything i say go with this matchbox technology where uh, you spend very little on your pit or trench or anything let us do it you will get some credit it's also seasonally you do something over after 3 4 months done so both are there so there also i train here also here i work as more on um, hand holding kind of uh, thing where people are really investing uh, whereas in uh, farmer based thing it is seasonal thing just train them once a cycle is done next day cycle they will do on their own that's not a big deal there will be a middle person required always you know that bundling and all that uh, it is not viable for individual to register and all that so we have those challenges so for that reason the local person it could be an fpo it could be an university it could be some other person into business of uh, doing these things so they will be there always supporting them 
of course they will not be able to tell all the statistics to a farmer that is a very big challenge now as of now those are working with farmers on a large scale they cannot tell at what rate they are uh, selling or buying whatever might be the uh, cost of investment or uh, facilitation cost what percentage goes where and if you tell all these things uh, i know these things will not uh, sustain because farmer thinks uh, that guy is cheating but we know say european guy cannot sustain unless he charges that much or we know an educated guy because there is lots of procedure including your software let us say there is a cost involved in everything so all these things who will explain to the farmer so that he will never get it also so these things i think uh, we should understand and uh, there i think uh, in remote area those things are working as of now but within no time these things will be open any day and uh, there we will have more challenges uh, convincing the farmers and everybody telling that uh, this is the business model how it goes uh, without this kind of systems in place we cannot sustain everybody will not succeed or sustain so like that uh, some things are there i think you know far better all this uh, model because you are directly into it i am a facilitator uh, but still i know i can understand that so once yes. we get into some kind kind of agreement and uh, you are supporting me or yeah. we work together then i think uh, from case to case uh, once you define your geographical area then uh, already your strategy within that strategy what value i can bring up based on my vast experiences or understanding from other success stories so it goes on so that will be unique to your place and your mode of working but we cannot have generalized strategies everywhere and that is also i'm sure and biomass to biomass also it is completely different game uh, that much i can say even we work with agriculture residue it's a different thing or if you work with uh, woody biomass or even exotic species that's a different thing so even government or local government supporting uh, like in uh, uttar pradesh haryana punjab stubble burning support that's a different game so i think uh, we have so many things and uh, value addition things also i can bring up there uh, some businesses will be generated beyond biochar so what values uh, we can create uh, using uh, yeah, ultimately there will be more livelihoods uh, when they do value addition for the local community and also they will get more income rather just uh, putting biochar as it is into the soil even that has less meaning actually so uh, so many things are there in between so or uh, even raichur nearby i have done so meerut i have done uttarakhand i have done almora area so my workshop goes into tribal area to different places across geography in the field i train not in the ac rooms yeah because the uh, ac rooms has no meaning for my workshops because i want to show in the field uh, all the aspects and then and there maybe uh, for some lectures uh, i'll have that closed uh, uh, space but uh, all my activities uh, after the lectures uh, you see i need to demonstrate the pyrolysis the simplest methods so we'll do it there something like that. so yeah maybe half acre or one acre land or somebody's uh, farm house is there let us say even those things will do perfect some accommodation facility yeah yeah everything see all the fundamentals i will be teaching because biochar is not uh, just one thing right from uh, the historic things to the present context i will be teaching the person who is already known still sometimes uh, some gaps will be there for them but for young people see for you to get staff also is very difficult suddenly you announce and say come and join in my biochar project they have zero knowledge you will be struggling a lot to teach that guy so once they attend with me then everybody is on the same platform so for you to start your work it is very easy something like that so for that reason people uh, engage their uh, staff and other people with me yeah like that somebody want to start on their own also then they come and attend like that 
Actually, at the announced a boot camp of eight days in very intensive, including I want to bring some industrial applications, environmental applications, uh, like the different aspects, even construction. Uh, but what happened is people said the uh, eight days is too much for them. I don't know. Uh, when I can teach eight days or even fifteen days, uh, originally I planned forty-five days. So okay. that I want to put only in the field kind of exposure every day they do work in the field. So, but uh, still I reduced to eight days. Uh, they felt like that, so I dropped it. Uh, so uh, this twenty-fifth I am conducting this work of field level observations. Uh, even if somebody from your organization if they can join, uh, that will be they can see then in their in the field uh, observations. Uh, of course, here in field observation, they will not get everything around biochar, but they will see the evidences what a biochar can do on ground. So, otherwise, this kind of intensive training is another model. Or whenever I conduct certain things, I announce regularly on my website. So they are there. So that is another option. Okay. Yeah, meeting has no meaning. I think Zoom is far better than meeting. You will be wasting your time and my time. Okay. At least now we are saving 100% time. I use technology nowadays. I don't believe in what I said. I chai pe charcha upura. My apko dekli, ap mujhe dekli hai. So that's fine for me. So only if there is some serious thing to work, then we'll get on. So otherwise, uh, you can go through my videos, my books, uh, whatever resources I have put up, that is always available, what I want to share. But only personally, if somebody wants to engage, then uh, the professionally I will get engaged. Otherwise, I don't have time also much for my, as I said, one million is my mission and I'm, uh, I need to work this well. And whatever support you are giving me, that's a support for the mission, that much one has to get. So uh, I need to be, I am also mentoring CDRA, you might be knowing, Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. I am a technical expert there. So I mentor three countries, people from three countries. T-Hub is another uh, place where I am mentoring uh, uh, one person from UK. He is a UK citizen. He wants to work on air pollution monitoring sensors in India. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, where I am mentoring another person. So, like that I have many other uh, these things also. So, my domains, uh, they are across, sir. When I visit a field, I don't see just biochar. I also work at water level also. I help them. What is the TDS and uh, what is your soil alkalinity? How to amend your soil first, then bring up biochar next. So, like that many inter integrated things come from my uh, knowledge. Okay. Yeah, even for AWD, I have installed sensors, low cost sensors. You can search that thing. Sensors and my name, if you put, I have designed uh, this RBC flumes uh, attached sensors to monitor at field level how much water they are taking, where AWD method is there, or otherwise in other crop, how much uh, the neighbor is using, consuming water. And I also use Bowman water filters because you are into that. Uh, when hairline cracks automatically, I get a message, then I start irrigating. So, like that, uh, my domains, uh, they go across, even uh, green buildings are low-cost uh, houses, including biochar bricks, I am now into. So, my one of my videos is very popular, I constructed one low-cost house. Now, more than a million views it got as of now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, trending actually here in Telugu-speaking states. <laughs> So, it's a multidisciplinary thing, sir, actually. This is what we are working. That's why I see not a department uh, is entering directly into this sector. People with uh, understanding, comprehensive understanding of various uh, sciences, they are uh, into climate change or in this kind of sustainability. I might not have been that uh, entrepreneur like I am a thinker, I am a thinker, I am a creator, I am an innovator, you can name anything, I am a writer, more than 50 books I have. Which is also required. Yeah, I have many other things uh, to my this thing. I am not claiming, you can just ask chat GPT, just put my name and uh, give, ask it to give my biography to you. Now I can see. Uh, nowadays, uh, 
Nowadays, people are designing my courses by asking ChatGPT. Based on the experience and understanding of Dr. Sai Bhaskaretti, give a three-day course on biochar schedule, which schedule. So that schedule they are putting before me and asking me to train. So one of my friend did that recently. When I asked, uh, where is my schedule? He said, just wait. <laughs> then he asked ChatGPT and it gave and he said, now you teach these things for the next three days. Oh. Yeah, I'll be happy if uh, anybody, including your staff, uh, anybody known people are... Uh, because Hindi, English, Telugu, three videos are there on my channel also. By HR channel. I think you got it maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I can, I can see this. Yeah, yes. By HR channel is my channel. So I put lots of efforts sir, in doing all these things. Uh, so it has nothing to do with uh, any kind of um, uh, money generated through YouTube, you know. Uh, how much yeah. uh, it generates, uh, nothing. But uh, this is the cause, as I said. See, you see one lakh views I got already from May till now. I'm very happy with that. And 20 yeah. countries, more than 20 countries, I'm very happy. Why I should not be happy, tell me. Yeah, yeah. When of cost uh, yeah. and the delivery cost is so low and uh, we have a goal and uh, people are uh, listening and uh, learning. Yeah. Yeah.